Well, that happened. It's very difficult to find RPGs with original concepts and stories. Most of them end up just being some overused juxtaposition of ideas from when the genre first started. But the Mother series changed just what RPGs could do by having the games take place in a modern setting. This, among many other tropes that the game spawned, inspired Fwug Radiation, also known as Toby Fox, who, at the time, was known for making the Earthbound Halloween hack back in 2009. And it is one of the creepiest Earthbound hacks you'll ever play. Trust me. Fast forward to 2013, where a quirky little RPG called Undertale went up on Kickstarter. It came with a demo so those who wanted to try the game before backing it could. Comparisons to the Mother Games, Cave Story, Toho, and the Shimagami Tensei games were clearly evident to people. And that was just when they played the demo. It offered around 45 minutes of gameplay, introducing people to the world of Undertale and a small handful of characters, each with a lot of personality and depth considering the short amount of time you spend with them. Toby only asked for a measly $5,000 to fund the game, but with the help of his amazing demo and word of mouth, Undertale was funded by over 1,000%, receiving $51,124 by the end of the campaign. Our final stop takes us to September 15th, 2015, where Undertale had released in its entirety. And before I get into anything going over the game itself, I just want to say that I'm going to keep major plot points and characters out of this video. You may see them in passing footage, but I swear this video is completely free of at least story spoilers. Capiche? Good. Let's see what Undertale has to offer, and what makes its world worth investing yourself in. Long ago, in an age since past, humans and monsters alike lived in a sanction of harmony and peace. But one day, everything changed. War manifested in the hearts of both beings, leading the monsters, whose souls combined were too weak to stand up to that even of a single human, to be sealed underground. After generations and generations of separation from the monsters, a child, seeking shelter from the rain, has secretly fallen into the underground. What will become of this lone soul, and how will they cope with this unforeseen incident? The people they meet, and the choices they make will impact them more than they could ever imagine. Unlike other games I've talked about, the true goal isn't established until the end of the story, but our primary objective comes from this woman, named Toriel. While spending a short amount of time in her domain, she warns us about Asgore, a monster with immense power, looking to destroy the surface and free the monsters that lie away, hidden in the underground. Now, that may seem pretty straightforward, but you actually have a lot of options between the beginning and end of the game. Your choices carry consequences no matter what route you take and only one will truly reveal the tale buried within these twists and turns. Your first moments in the underground may lead to some confusion, but thankfully this conveniently placed talking flower named Flowey is here to help us. So apparently this right here is our soul, which we must protect at all costs. You want some love, don't you? Are you coming on to me? Nah dude, I'm waiting for a nice human woman, so unless you are either of those, which you are so clearly not, I'm gonna have to pass on your offer. Look, Flowey, I know you're disappointed, but you're just not my type of flower, man. I'm more of a blue rose kind of guy. Well, don't get mad at me. Haven't you ever heard of personal boundaries? Run into the bullets. You know what? You're not helping me explain the gameplay anymore. Get out of here. Undertale's variety is vast, taking elements from all sorts of games. RPGs, bullet hell shoot 'em ups dating sims... Yeah, among a few others. Being an RPG, you may feel the need to kill every enemy you meet, but Undertale introduces this new thing called a spare mechanic. Huh. I wonder why other games never use that. The more you spare, the less your EXP and love from battles will go up. The more you kill, the higher your EXP is by the final boss, and the more consequential the final outcome. Think of it like the Sorrow from Metal Gear Solid 3. Plus, you have to fight a certain character when going on a certain route because... Reasons. Reasons that I'm not gonna talk about here. Sparing enemies effectively allows it so you can beat the entire game without anyone or anything dying, so that's pretty cool. But how does combat fare in tangent with this? During battles, to spare enemies, you cannot fight. However, you must engage. You're probably thinking, can't I just flee most of the battles and complete the game that way then? You could try, but unless you actually knew how an enemy attacked and were able to avoid all of their patterns, you'd be dead before the second boss. Taking on monsters is a necessity, as you're supposed to spare them to get gold. 
or you could do a complete genocide playthrough, which does wield a special boss by the way, and acts more like a traditional RPG. Just know that the consequences are... dire if you attempt to atone for your sins. In order to survive the perils of the underground, you must first recognize enemy attacks. A monster's move and what it represents are signified by color. Orange is an attack that you have to move into to dodge, blue means to stay completely still, green heals one single health point, and white is just bad in general. These can be the central point of an enemy or a boss. Segwaying onto bosses, each one was memorably fantastic. Okay, well, maybe this guy isn't fantastic, but he certainly is memorable. There's only like, what, five bosses that I can show that won't spoil the story? But trust me, they all put a unique spin on the game's battle system. One of my personal favorites is Muffet, who sets you on three bars and you have to dodge her oncoming attacks, almost like a rhythm game. And then there's Metaton, who plays like a Toho boss. You would be hard-pressed to find this sort of lineup even in a AAA game, especially that final boss. He turns the entire game on its head. It's... it's just so good. Uh, I'll stop gushing about the battle system here, though. Outside of battle, you'll have an overworld to explore, solving puzzles to move the story forward. There isn't an enormous pool of puzzle types, but the ones that are set in place have more complex versions the further you get into the game. They're not just stepping on tiles or moving blocks. They can be a shooting minigame or completing a certain action to get a hint. They had me thinking throughout the whole of the adventure, even when puzzles are something I've been accustomed to for a very long time now. They may not be what I personally call brain teasers, but they did take me a minute or two to find the solution. Pretty much anyone who knows how to solve a Zelda puzzle can figure these out. The only gripe I have with these are that, when a puzzle is introduced, most of them only appear once or twice in the game, so you don't really need to retain that knowledge of a puzzle, as even when a harder version is introduced, it's still pretty easy. Oh well, I guess not everything about the gameplay can be a winner. The final gameplay element is also the most central theme of Undertale. The choices you make. You're probably wondering, Jared, why are choices so important? What makes multiple playthroughs meaningful? Well, my friend, without spoiling too much, your second playthrough will harken back to your first, referencing things that your character shouldn't remember or even care about. This becomes an amalgamation of memories drawn from the past choices you've made, helping you understand what you should and shouldn't do in the context of the story. It's very complicated, and I'm not even sure how I feel about some of the outcomes, but learning from your actions to better the story, as long as you don't do a genocide run, really gets me right in the heart. What also gets me right in the heart are the characters inhabiting Undertale's world. You'll meet a plethora of memorable faces in the underground, each with their own speech patterns, texts, mannerisms, voices, and that's just how they're presented. They all have some form of motivation, and they all fight for what they believe to be the greater good. Minor characters like common enemies also have some personality, not only in their texts, but in the way they attack during battles as well. Can I just say something about this art style though? It's very... uh, strange. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like it, but that doesn't make it any less weird to me. It's very simplistic, comparable to Mother 1, but unlike that game, each character has a point, or at least is one of a kind in their design. It really fleshes out the world instead of seeing the same hiker five times in a row. Every member of the cast stands out in their own little way. I mean, there's literally a character named Sans whose text speech is Comic Sans. Not even joking. While on the topic of jokes though, Undertale has to be one of the funniest RPGs I've ever played. It strikes a great balance between parts you're supposed to take seriously, and the joke that slips in every once in a while. Enemy variety is great as well, there's no more than 45 if you include the bosses, but this amount is used to the game's advantage. You won't be fighting the same guys in more than one area, which is cool as it makes each piece of the world feel like its own unique habitat. I just can't elaborate enough on how each character was able to come to life and fill in a part of the world. There's just so much detail. Okay, I'm just gonna be real with you, just like always, so nothing different. This soundtrack is my favorite ever, period. Toby composed every song you hear in the game. With over 100 tracks, you think there would be one that I wouldn't like, but nope. Every single one is fantastic, no matter what the situation. The soundtrack is as much as the game is, and you can bet your top dollar that it is deserving of that price. I just love how much variety the soundtrack offered, and I can clearly recall where each song played and what its main melody was. The songs I've had in the background this entire video barely scratch the surface of how good it is. 
A simple word of warning though, when you play the game, the soundtrack song titles are actually spoilers, so beat the game before looking it up. Well, I guess when there's a song called Bird That Carries You Over a Disproportionately Small Gap, boss spoilers aren't so out of line for the naming scheme. If you were going to play the game for one thing, I'd say the story first and foremost, but this is definitely my second of many reasons. Huh. I was just thinking, how am I going to finish this video? Well, I'll try my best. Undertale has struck me on a very emotional level that no other game has done so before. Some people say the story loses steam at the end, while others say it had a weak beginning. I disagree with both of these sides, as I thought the story was consistently perfect. And if you didn't like one of the endings, go and try to get one of the other, like, three or whatever how many there are. Yeah, I may have felt a bit uncomfortable in some areas of the game, maybe even a bit too uncomfortable from what I usually subject myself to, but those are just merely minor aspects of an even greater game. It may have a few problems, heck, you may even have more with it than me, but that's what makes us different. Undertale is currently available for Mac and PC, with console ports possible, but not entirely likely. I'd love to see it come to the PS4 and Xbox One for more people to even play it, but some things in spoiler territory may just say otherwise. The game is priced at $10, and the soundtrack is that much as well. Or you can buy the game and soundtrack in a bundle for $18, and honestly, that's a steal no matter which way you slice it. My first playthrough took me around 6 hours, and my second one was about 3. Although that's kind of a lie, as the Genocide Run bosses extended my playtime by at least 6 hours. If you include how many times I died anyway. My third and final playthrough was around 7 hours. This is the one with the true ending, and you have to complete it to completely comprehend the basics of the story. Pretty much everything here comes together, even some questions you may not have had are answered here. But really, this review isn't enough. I want to do a few more Undertale videos at least, but in due time. If you are expecting my personal score, uh, don't. I want you guys to experience the game and make your own assumption and personal connection off of it. It has a lot of heart and soul, fantastic music, and above all else, it's just an amazing game to play and experience. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble about this little game that I love. Until next time, take care. Welcome to my first unscripted end slate. I haven't done one of these before, so let's see how it goes. Okay, so what did I mean by I'll make more Undertale videos in due time? Well, simply put, Smash Brothers, I put like 20 videos out in a month. That was not good for me or my representation of quality. And that's why only half of the people who watch my videos... Simply put, that's why there's more views on my Smash videos. You're probably also wondering, at least if you beat the game, why did I do the Genocide Run first? Okay, well, funny story. I actually didn't do the Genocide Run first. I did a pseudo-Genocide Run, which turned out to be a neutral run. So, uh... Only the five of you who watch this and Slate actually know. But still, I did go back, do a genocide run, and now I'm doing a pacifist run again. And, uh, I do know what happens now, so, uh, uh, don't do a genocide run. Please. Unless you want a really cool boss. My other Undertale videos aren't out yet, but I've been making the thumbnails for them anyway, so that's pretty cool. I'm doing pixel art. That's, that's nice, because I want to get into that a bit more, actually. It, it'll really help me in the long run, I'm, at least I'm pretty sure it will. But if you are watching this video like 2016 and beyond, well, good job for finding it because no one watches my videos right now. And second of all, the three videos are top 10 Undertale bosses, which I worked really hard on. At least I'm pretty sure I worked really hard on it. I work hard on all my videos, so, you know. The second video is a theory video on WD Gaster. If you don't know who he is you, and you haven't played the game yet, um... You're not going to know who he is if you played the game, but don't look him up yet until you actually beat the game. It's, it's confusing. And then the final video is also a theory video. I know who I want to do it on, but I haven't actually scripted or gotten the info or anything on that. So I'm still working on it, really. But yeah, that's really it. I don't have any more to talk about. So I guess until next time, do you want me to do more unscripted end slates? Get to know me a bit better? Because I wouldn't mind doing that. Okay, well, I'll leave that to you guys. Until next time, take care.